Joining us, Paul Hudson, CEO uh, of Santa Fe. It's great to have you, uh, have you on the, the, the show this morning, uh, Paul. And thank you, Meg, uh, for, uh, for bringing us. So it can, in a nutshell, can you uh, map out a, a guide for the future for, for Santa Fe that in terms of diabetes and cancer both and, and how it might be diverging at this point? Well, good morning to all of you, and uh, thank you for having me on the show. It's a big moment for us as an organization because we are, of course, as you said, rolling out our strategy. You know, we've got a proud history in diabetes and we've contributed a significant amount. I think going forward, choosing to focus on areas where we have breakthrough science, where we can really change and transform lives is the most important thing on our agenda. So we'll break into oncology, to breast cancer, to um, uh, rare diseases, including all the way out to Parkinson's. We'll take on many different diseases, including multiple sclerosis. At the heart of it, though, and one of the reasons why we're gathering everybody together is, you know, Sanofi is a bit of a, bit of a hidden gem, a bit of a well-kept secret. We've got some great science. We've got a proud history. Now is the time to really focus our efforts, make sure our people are playing at the very best they can be, and that we can really deliver this proud next chapter for the company. I'm frankly thrilled to be leading the business and humbled by the responsibility to help them navigate this next chapter. Paul, I'd love to ask you more about the decisions to exit diabetes and cardiovascular disease, because, of course, those are two of the just most major diseases affecting humankind. Um, is it that the science wasn't there, that the commercial models don't work? You're also um, pulling back, I think, investment in your cholesterol drug partnered with Regeneron called Praluent, which nobody debates the science behind that drug is very strong, but the, it's been a commercial failure, really. Um, so what does this decision say about those markets just not being appealing to you to even buy in if your internal science wasn't good? So, you know, as I said, we've contributed a lot to cardiovascular long before prevalence and indeed in diabetes. I think you're right. Um, some of the access challenges that new breakthrough medicines face in cardiovascular are a challenge themselves, but that wouldn't put us off. You know, we're determined to bring breakthroughs and get them accepted by patients because they change lives. What we're really looking for now is to say, if we were to be in those areas, it would have to be truly transformational and it would have to be demonstrating significant value to payers and healthcare systems. That's where we're focusing our energy. So whilst we've contributed a lot to what uh, has transformed lives, you know, it's time to put our efforts into areas where we think the next breakthroughs will come. The, um, the state of, of cancer research right now and the big pharmas versus sort of some of the niche players, is, is, is your recent acquisition a model for, for how Santa Fe will, will approach things or in-house? Uh, are, do you have uh, some, some promising molecules, or are you, you're going to have to go uh, outside uh, to some of these niche players? That a lot of them are up on Route 128, I know. So, you know, um, I think we're proud of the R&D function that we have, and we've, again, you know, developed some incredible medicines, discovered some incredible medicines. I think we just have to realize the world we live in now, that science can be born anywhere. It can even be born on a laptop, you know, uh, with a small group of people. Uh, uh, such as the processing power that exists. We just have to be open-minded to it. It's not like, should it be inside, should it be outside? It's what's going to transform and change lives? How will it fit with what we've got? How, will it, uh, how could it be used in combination? What could it mean for the patients? And what could it mean for our own organization? And what could follow? The deal um, that we uh, had accepted on Monday was really a statement of, we think the future of immuno-oncology um, could be IL-2-based, we think we need to participate. We think the Synthorex uh, model is the best one, and we like the lead asset. But we also, and this is the beauty of the new model, we get to use that in combination perhaps with our CD38, Sarkleza, uh, the PD1, um, uh, Libtio, and we get to look more broadly about the combinations. And I think it's the coming together of the brilliance of research that really gives the opportunity. You know, me, new enroll, you know, with a new team, a new lead, on R&D, we're open-minded to how we collaborate that science to just do extraordinary things for patients. And, you know, that's the fun part of the job. So uh, that, you, that was a La Jolla startup. The Merck uh, RQ was based up on Route 128. Both of them are hotbeds for, uh, for, for startups. I'm trying to figure out how this works. What's, what's, what is the research platform for uh, Synthrex? Paul, it, I, I know it's, it's, well, it's small it's, molecules yeah. they, they, to treat solid tumors or what? Look, it's a whole host of tumors. What it's, what it's effectively doing is allowing um, some tumor types through the treatment 
that were, you know, conceived as almost undruggable, number one. What it's allowing is the fact that IL-2 and the science around it as a cytokine has been known for a long time. But it was just impossible to produce a medicine that would be able to be used in the clinic at the right type of dose. And I think Synthorix cracked it. They have a unique approach. It's differentiated. It's sustainable. And that platform and how they make that in terms of the DNA components is really the transformational piece. And that's what we're excited about. Much more to come from that. Yeah, pretty nice market check on Santa Fe today. Paul, thank you.